Hi, I'm Keith Harkey, the trainer at Homeland Security. Are you thinking of becoming a super secret cool agent for the United States government? Well, you don't have to waste time driving to a school. You don't have to worry about a lot of books, papers, or any real world training. You don't have to sit in a classroom for hours every day. You can get your license online. Take the course at your own pace. You can take the course even from your own home. Become a Homeland Security agent with National School of Homeland Security. What is up, guys? Tyson Dela Cruz here. Thank you so much for rocking with me. We have some new shocking, shocking whistleblower testimony about the agents, agents assigned to the J-13 detail during the Trump rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, when he was nearly assassinated. Shout out to everybody watching. Drop your comments down below. You don't want to miss this one. The only thing that I ask is that you smash the like button because for some reason, they are suppressing this content. They are suppressing what happened on J13 with Donald Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania. And they're not even they're not even covering this in the media. And this is shocking. Shout out to everybody. Thank you so much. Let's dive into the video. Every couple of weeks, the FBI and Secret Service give us, you know, drip, drip, drip. Little info on the Trump shooting, but it never amounts to anything. The real investigative work's being done by Congress. A new report from Congressman Clay Higgins reveals that a local Butler SWAT team operator took the first shot at Crooks, damaging his rifle and ending his shooting spree before the Secret Service fully neutralized him. I didn't know that. New images released by the FBI show Crooks' rifle with apparently a damaged stock from the local officer's shot. But when the acting Secret Service Director Ronald Rowe testified, he made no mention of this local officer, gave full credit for bringing down Crooks. I am extremely proud of these actions and those taken by the counter sniper team to neutralize the threat that prevented further loss of life. And I applaud the actions of our tactical teams that responded so quickly. The Secret Service counter sniper neutralized the assailant within seconds after the assailant fired his weapon. Why didn't the Secret Service chief mention that the locals were the first ones to get rounds off on crooks, not the Secret Service? Why the Secret Service turned down a drone? Why they never pick up the radios they were supposed to use to communicate with locals with? Why wasn't the Wi-Fi working that day? Why wasn't there a counter sniper team on the roof? All good questions, Jesse Waters. All good questions. Why wasn't there somebody at the water tower? The highest peak overseeing the entire rally. What, what was going on? Why was Crooks's body prematurely cremated before a proper, a thorough investigation could happen? Why was the roof washed off quickly and it wasn't a crime scene weeks? Sorry, I had a, had a hair flying around weeks after the or, or a week after the event. It wasn't even blocked off. It was back open to the public. What what is really going on here? And why aren't the FBI and Secret Service cooperating with congressional investigators. Senator Josh Hawley has been in contact with whistleblowers and has new information he's going to exclusively share with us here at primetime. So what now are we hearing from whistleblowers, Senator? Well, what I've heard tonight, Jesse, is that most of the agents who were there at that rally in Butler were not Secret Service agents. They were, in fact, Homeland Security agents. And get this, most of those Homeland Security agents the only training that they received was an online webinar, a two hour online webinar. And I'm told that about half the time, the sound to the webinar didn't even work. So <laughs> think about this. The president of the United States, former president of the United States, Donald Trump is sent out on stage. Most of the people there aren't trained. They're not qualified. They only got a webinar training and even that didn't work. It is absolutely outrageous. You're saying, and if we're to believe that there's this big Iranian threat, that this is coming down the pike and they had to beef up security. Their idea of beefing up security was not putting more Secret Service agents and counter snipers 
was just throwing in a bunch of guys that have never done this before from Homeland Security and sending them into some Zoom training that didn't work? That's exactly right. I'm told that actually agents, Homeland Security agents, were pulled off of child exploitation cases, child endangerment cases, the stuff they normally do. They don't normally do protective detail work at all. They were pulled off those cases, said, here, you're going to go guard the former president of the United States. Watch oh this God. webinar. Oops, it doesn't really work. Oh, that's all right. Go out into the field anyway. Jesse, this is a nightmare. And we still have no answers. The only reason we know this stuff is because of whistleblowers. It's outrageous. That is absolutely crazy. I can't even wrap my head around it. When, when you heard the first story about this counter sniper shoot, I thought it was the guys on the high roof. Then I heard it was the guys farther away. And now I'm hearing the first shot that was gotten off was by a local and he wasn't even perched. He was on the ground. Yeah, all I can say is that is not what the director told Congress. And you just played the clip. I was sitting right there in the Senate when he testified that it was a Secret Service counter sniper who neutralized the threat, that is, took out crooks. He said nothing about another sniper, a local, nothing at all. Jesse, this is a pattern now. Why aren't these guys out there, Secret Service and FBI, doing regular briefings, answering questions, giving us answers? They're not doing any of that. They're hoarding the information. They're keeping it from the public. And it, this has gone on too long. I mean, people have got to get fired for this. No, they do. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again, Senator Hall. Crazy. That is absolutely crazy. And a few weeks ago, um, Ben Schaefer uh, testified with the, own, the, the Republican Party did their own investigation. And he testified. And this is what he had to say. Operators, uh, they were, yes. And what what was the form of the communication? <clears throat> the form uh, implements office and fail-proof way to communicate because of the level of importance that's needed. Did you um, did secret? Let's let's put it this way: Were, were radios and communication uh, implements offered to Secret Service by by the local uh, operators? Uh, they were, yes. And what what was the form of the communication? The form of communication would have been uh, some type of encrypted uh, law enforcement style radio. And uh, do you know, did uh, the Secret Service avail themselves of that? Did they get, did they obtain those radios? Uh, I believe they were offered, but I, I do not believe they were taken. This is ridiculous, guys. The Secret Service did not take encrypted radios. They didn't even show up to the briefing prior to the Butler rally. And... Uh, former director Don Cheadle said that, yeah, we had a briefing, but the, here's the thing. They didn't show up. They didn't show up. No Secret Service agent showed up. This this is a mess. And nobody nobody's talking about this anymore. And it is, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. Let me know what you guys think about this. Drop it in the chat down below. So they, they did not utilize the, the, the preferred me mechanisms of communication that was offered to them. That's correct. Um, let's talk timeline for a second. Um, so if we look at this, this timeline, it indicates to us uh, we'll go 510, at 5.10 p.m., the shooter is identified as a suspicious person near the AGR building. Does that sound right to what you're understanding of the timeline? Yes, sir. And, and so... At, some, at least some point, somebody had seen him by 5, 10 p.m. That's an hour before the shooting. They adjudicated he was suspicious. And in testimony uh, before the committees of Congress, they indicated to us that uh, when I say they, I'm talking Cheadle, Rowe, and, and Ray, uh, the directors and interim directors of Secret Service and FBI, they indicated to us that there's a distinction between a suspicious person and a uh, threat and, and so you have a suspicious individual, you have a threat, there's an interim uh, category as well. What's that interim ca category? Um, in, our, in our uh, line of communications from a, from a SWAT point of view and from a tactical point of view, um, our escalation of people that we encounter starts out as a suspicious person, uh, then goes to a person of interest, and then from that level upgrades to what we refer to as a threat. And each one of those uh, warrant a different response. 
So, so the actual shooting takes place uh, right about 6, 11 p.m. So an hour, an hour elapses. How soon after the first identification of the shooter, which is at 5, 10 p.m., did you, well, before we get there, let's lay the foundation. What, what, were, you, what were you doing that day? Um, I was in a counter sniper role uh, with one of my teammates in the southwest quadrant of the event center. Um, distance wise, it was approximately 238 yards southwest of the podium uh, and approximately 348 south southwest of the Schooner's final firing position. And, and so he was not ever in your, in your sector of responsibility? Uh, nor in my uh, visual, uh, nor sector, nor visual. I never had visual. How soon after he's identified, um, were you given information that, or did you hear information that there was a, a, a suspicious character um, that, that you should be alerted to? I uh, believe those text messages came across. Um, and just to give some background on, on the text message uh, tactics. So in this type of, inv uh, in, in this type of event, uh, as tactical officers, we try to build redundancy and communications because it's so critical. Uh, we start out in a, in a primary role, which would have been our radios that day, communicating on a designated channel amongst all the tactical operators. Uh, because we were in support of the host agency, which would have been the Butler the Emergency Services Unit, we also were running a secondary channel that was our local Washington regional SWAT team channel. Uh, on top of that, the snipers and counter snipers, or I should just say the counter snipers, there were no snipers involved in our chat. Um, had set up a, another chat to be able to provide any type of pictures or any type of relevant media or anything like that that we'd have been able to, to cross talk. So did you ever see any pictures? That, were any pictures ever sent to you? They were. Uh, the pictures came across the uh, chat. Pictures came across on the chat. Pictures came across with that. Ben, ben Schaefer was out of range. He didn't have visual. He didn't have visual on the on the suspect. And Crooks was roaming around the event area an hour and a half, two hours before the event with a rangefinder notified as suspicious activity. It's this is it's crazy that more people haven't been terminated. I know a series of Secret Service agents have been placed on leave since this incident. Don uh, Don Chino, Kim Cheadle has did resign she needs to be reprimanded for the the failure in this me personally i i i feel dan dan bongino uh shout out to dan bongino had opening statements regarding this uh republican forum of the examination uh for the examination of the assassination attempt on donald trump for the uh, Butler rally. And here's what he had to say. Right to the point, this was an apocalyptic security failure. A man was murdered in front of his family. Three people were shot on live television, including President Trump and the head who came within two millimeters of having his head explode on national television in front of millions of people. It's no, no sugar coating it. It's no time for BS. Unfortunately, as uh, Congressman Crane and Mills both indicated, the story seems to have, have vanquished, have been vanquished to the phantom zone of media coverage. It's amazing how we're still talking about JFK's assassination, uh, but nobody seems to want to talk about President Trump being shot in the head on national television, despite the fact that we have no answers. So I have five minutes, so I want to keep it quick, and I want to make three points. I worked in the Secret Service for 12 years. I loved it. I worked with some really amazing men and women um, who gave everything. I mean, I, I. A couple of them literally gave everything. I know guys who've gotten bizarre diseases overseas, like chicken guinea fever and protection operations. Everybody gave a little bit of something in the Secret Service, and it was a real honor to say I was part of it. But they have three institutional problems, I believe, in the macro uh, will help us get to the bottom of how this uh, Secret Service apocalyptic failure won't happen again. First, they have a technology problem. The joke in the Secret Service, which is just sadly no longer funny when I was there, and it wasn't funny then either, is uh, they rely on yesterday's technology tomorrow. Think about that. Yesterday's technology tomorrow. 
everything from computer systems at waste agents times, filling out time and attendance records they were doing, to uh, Congressman Crane and I discussing the fact that they only implemented slings, a technology as old as the wheel, uh, about, I don't know, five or six years into my time in the Secret Service, which is embarrassing. The weaponry was old, everything was old. These are things I would have talked about sooner if they didn't create a security crisis, and I obviously didn't want to air them publicly. Now you're seeing what happens when you don't have a drone up at a site you could have bought for $39.99 on Amazon. Second, um, another adage in the Secret Service you've heard even the new acting director discuss is the more with less approach. There is no more with less, there's less with less, okay? Uh, the Secret Service more with less approach only works if you produce more. That's how capitalism works. You produce a flat screen TV that was probably 20 years ago, $10,000. It's 200 bucks at Walmart now. They produce a better TV with less. That's not what the Secret Service did. They produced less with more. They were given more money and produced less. A 20-year-old criminal outsmarted them on a $40 drone technology piece of device. You're telling me that's more with less? That's disgusting. That's, not, that's nothing with less. That's less with more. Their budget went up. You guys know you're appropriators. You know that. Third, and I'll wrap it up with this, turn it over to Mr. Prince. The investigative mission, the Secret Service, that they're telling you they need to make them better agents is total crap. That's garbage. Their agents are, are, are talented, smart people. They can figure out how to do protection without running out cheap $20 counterfeit notes at 7-Eleven on a Friday night while the president's getting shot in the head. How is it we have a DEA, we have an FBI, we have TIGTA, the IRS, CBP, and a thousand other entities with a $6 trillion budget, which I, I know a lot of you guys have been fighting against this grotesque spending. $3 billion goes to the Secret Service, and we're wasting time running out counterfeit notes. It's a serious problem counterfeiting. Granted, it might be a legacy item. They started doing counterfeiting. That's not what we do now. Get rid of the investigative mission, turn it over to other people, let them do what they do best and should do best. Protection, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. This is unfolding. More whistleblowers are coming out. More video, more footage is coming out from the PA rally with Donald Trump and the attempted assassination attempt, excuse me, attempted assassination attempt. I said that several times. Sorry about that. But more whistleblowers are coming out. More footage is coming out and it is unraveling. And we need to figure out exactly what happened. Epic failure. Epic failure. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your comments down below. Smash the like button, share, and subscribe. And as always, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.